All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time we talk a little bit about Mason Mount. All right, all right, all right, here we go back again on the other side of the coin. Welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Back again with Ryan Gunners. First of all, Ryan, how you doing? Wow. After yesterday's game, as I tweeted, mm. I watched a good Bollywood movie. I had a good cry. And now I'm just really <laughs> proud of the boys. Uh, and if you remember me, the end of last stream, I was so down, so deflated. No like, way. Miss can even get a word out of me. So you had to ask advanced questions. <laughs> but we're back so now miss could ask me questions because i feel like i have a better perspective of yesterday and i'm ready to get into it in particular about one player mason mount that's right baby that's right now you were you were now you were down and understandably as well a lot of a lot of the massive parts of the fan base were down as well um i'm still hurting but at the same time i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not um losing faith i think i think there was an optimistic feeling post that. But that aside, Ryan, one particular player that has really, really caught my eye over the last couple of games where we've been playing really well and Thomas Tuchel doing a little bit of madness with Ruben Loftus-Cheek and whatnot and Timo Werner, as you like to call him, Bimo Werner. Um, this particular player, Mason Mount, Ryan, Something different. Uh, I personally, look, I'll be honest with you. We'll, we'll share a clip very soon, ladies and gentlemen, and elaborate a little bit more on it uh, and look at what ex-players are talking about Mason Mount. But I've been quite vocal on my channel, um, and I would obviously love to know what you have to say down the track as well about you know Mason Mount and his season. I've been quite vocal ab ab about this player in, on my channel this, this particular season, saying that, Yes, the stats look great. Yes, he's got the goals. Yes, he's got the assists. But for me, something wasn't clicking. The entire package wasn't always there. You know, people talk about his energy, his pressing, but the pressing doesn't always look great when, when it's sort of not, not as a unit. Um, at times, he you know, losing the ball, passing, not the greatest. The vision wasn't always there. And so for me, those goals and assists always felt a little bit I wasn't satisfied, Ryan. I wasn't satisfied throughout the season. However, the last couple of games, Ryan, the full package has come into fruition. The goals and assists are there, but it's everything else that's falling into place. Passing, vision, tenacity. But it's that attitude I see him. It's like when he scores a goal or when he gets an assist, He's not bothered. He just gets back, puts his head down, he goes back. It's, a, it's like, I'm not happy. It's, it's Mason Mount trying to say, I'm, I'm, I want more. I want more and I want more. And it's that attitude that's getting me so excited. I want to ask you, Ryan, before we see a particular clip, how have you seen his season so far in your perspective? And don't let me influence you one bit. And have you seen anything different in the last couple of games for the Southampton and Real Madrid one? Well, you know, we all, last time we talked about put players like this, Mason Mount, Timo Werner, mm. um, Pulisic, we, all, we refer to raw materials and potential. Mm. When I think mm. about Mason Mount, he always shows that he has the raw materials to potentially be one of the best attack, attacking midfielders in the world. Um, mm. A lot of people says they like him deeper in central midfield positions. Mm. I, I don't mind, mind him starting there as a starting or reference, reference point, but I really like him getting in, in between the lines into those zones where he could get into the final third, impact the game through his passing, his shooting, etc. Um, so let's call him an attacking midfielder. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he has. Let's go about the positives, right? To round off uh, that question. Positives mm. that I love about Mason Mount is that due to his work rate and his mental capacity, he's really tactically flexible. 
I think mm-hmm. he has a really good understanding positionally of where he needs to be, often being that free man in attack, often knowing when to come back and de- help in defense. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, whether he's starting in midfield, on the wing, as an in, inside forward, wherever he's starting, even on pivot at times, he knows where to be, when where he needs to be. Mm-hmm. And um, at a young age, at, I don't know how old he is, 22 or 22. whatever. 22, yeah, I think he's 22. Um, Maybe 23. I think that smarts is really good in him. Also, we've seen um, he has that technical ability in tiny spaces. He's uh, good at the half turns. He can shoot good. He has good passing technique, etc. Hmm. I think... Um, wh- 23, where's... by the way. He's 23. Yeah. I think where I'm dis- disappointed in, in, in Mason Mount this season is that we haven't seen him take that next step yet mm. because many of these things I'm mentioning this time is I could have mentioned it 12 months ago to you mm-hmm. on a stream. Yes, he got more goals and more assists, but those goals and assists came in patches. It came in the beginning of the season and now. Mm. And then they add them up again, it looks like good figures. But for a mm. good six months in between, Mason Mount has, hasn't made that second step where he should be. And in particular, that second step has to be with, I, I say my biggest frustration with Mason Mount is in that final third, how much impact he has on the game. Yes. With respect to his, yes. with respect to his vision, um, putting players through at the right time. And so many times we see players making runs around him and he doesn't do it uh, as often as he should be doing it. Um, um even in the variety of the ways he attacks too. I think he could do way better at um, putting in different types of true balls as a creator, whether it's through lofted, passed crosses, um, ground through balls, and even in shooting, you know, there's many chances he got in this six month period where he wasn't scoring a lot, that 100%. he stopped opportunities. He just wasn't good enough at finishing. Even, mm. though, even though I'm not going to compare him to William, but if you look at Mason Mount's goals, you would say, wow, he's probably one of the best finishers in our attack with the kind mm. of goals he scores. But mm. then if you watch a two-minute video on Williams' goals at Chelsea, <laughs> it's also the same thing. It's probably some of the best goals he's seen. But when you look at how Great. often he does it um, and how much times he missed in that period, it just haven't been enough to show that he's made mm. a step up in his development. Mm. And um, mm. as I said, to put a full stop on his answer, he has the raw materials to become a world-class player, hmm. but I do not know if he will become that world-class player because there's many English talent that has that potential, Yeah, but yeah. many of them don't make it to be world-class. Will he become a good player? Yes. Will he improve? Yes. But will he become world-class, top-class, best attacking midfielders in the world? I don't know. But mm. my heart is open to it, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if he does become one of them. And, and this is the point. This is the point that I want to talk about. You know, I was in that situation like you as well. Just looking at the stats, ladies and gentlemen, quickly. Premier League, 26 uh, times he's featured. Um, this is straight from um, transfer market stats. 10 goals, 8 assists. Like, I mean, the stats look very good from that perspective. But as Ryan said, some of those goals were like in patches. Um, and in between, there were some monumental misses as well. Uh, Champions League, seven matches. He's featured one goal, two assists. Uh, obviously, we saw that goal against Real Madrid. A um, couple of assists previously as well. And most recently, the one that I can remember, ladies and gentlemen, is that Carabao Cup. Um, some monumental misses. And this is the thing. For me, especially the last couple of games, and I'm not going to, you know, make a claim that, oh, now Mason Mount is is well and truly back and he's going to be world-class, this, that, the other. This is what Ryan's saying. I'm open for it. I'm open for Mason Mount to prove to everyone that he is going to end up being a world-class player. And I want him to be. I really do. I want him to be a talisman at Chelsea Football Club. The thing that I've seen in the last two games, especially Southampton and Real Madrid, it kind of gives me a feeling if he continues in that way, in that manner, there is absolutely no stopping and there's absolutely no, you know, no reason for us not to believe 
that he could potentially be world class because there's just something there's something different all the aspect that Ryan said final third decision making was a lot more crisper cleaner you know his link up with Timo Werner have a look at both the games Southampton and Real Madrid his passing towards Ruben Loftus-Cheek out on the flanks there, there were a lot more clinical a lot more decisive and this is what I've really enjoyed in recent times. We're going to continue talking about this a little bit further and look into the future um, as to what we can expect or what we want to expect from Mason Mount with the upcoming fixtures. But let's have a look at the clip now from um, Vibe with Five, ladies and gentlemen. I love watching this channel because they get some fantastic guests and um, Rio Ferdinand gets to talk to um, ex-players and whatnot. And they've, they've always got some interesting things to you know say about current players. And this is what they have to say about... Mason Mount. It's a small clip, but it's 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 an interesting one. Like normally yeah, nine, yeah, isn't it? Normally yeah. nine. <laughs> Man. Yeah, so Alonso with the goals, Mount with two goals, Werner scored a couple, hitting crossbar, mm. posts, everything. Mount's goals Habits are as banging, well. bro. Mount, yeah. Yeah. Baller. Yeah. yeah. Good Mount, is, you know what? Mount is a mad player. I like watching yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like on and off the ball, that's what I love about it. It gives you both sides of the game. Like, yeah. but young players watching the game, if you watch Mount the way he plays, he's efficient with it mm. and he can bang. But like, it's the, it's the work ethic and the, the positions he takes up defensively, like ridiculous. He that's goes. why he'll always play for England because I think you can rely on him. Mm. we got Tottenham. I mean, there you go, Ryan. By the way, that was Kieran Richardson, ex-Man United player. To all the people, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but to the, for the classics like myself and Ryan, hopefully he knows who Kieran Richardson is. I watched a lot of Kieran Richardson when he was in Man United, his young days over there. Obviously, after that, he went on to, I believe, Sunderland and then finished up somewhere in Fulham. Um, and it's amazing to hear what they say about Mason Man. Look at the way Rio Ferdinand. I mean, there are certain... I know there are times where some of these, you know, pundits, players, ex-players, they say some outrageous stuff, but then there are certain things that you do really need to sit down and listen. Ryan, I want to ask you, the way they were talking about Mason, both Kieran Richardson and Rio Ferdinand, ballers, work ethic, this is why he's going to play for England always. Um, young players, look, look at him, the way he plays, off the ball, his defensive attributes. I mean, Ryan... We, we shouldn't, I feel like at times, and, I'm, and this is probably a, 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 um, a message to myself as well. Are we at times a bit too early to have a go at players like Mason Mount and then not realizing that just stay patient, stay patient, the, 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 the fruits are there and it's going to blossom into something incredible like or, or are we critical too quick at times? We are critical, but I don't think it's too quick because at the end of the day, this person is starting first nearly every game. I don't care if you're mm. 14 years old or 24. You know, mm. if you're starting every game for us, you have to be at a certain standard because you can't say sure. you want Chelsea to win Champions League and the, and the Premier League. And then in the next, in the next voice say, no, we've been too critical. We can't pick two. This is why I love you, bro. This is why I love you, bro. This is why I get you on the channel, bro. The other side of the coin. <laughs> yeah, and with me mount is that, I know I didn't even watch that video before uh, Rio basically said what I just said, that the positions he takes up tactically, both in attack mm. and defense, is what I like the most about him. So he shows that he has that mental mental um, awareness and, and, mm. and he knows football to a great extent. I just think it's, I always talk about that next step for Mason Mount. To mm. be honest, it could well and truly be one of the final steps because... Let's talk about this next step, Brian. I feel like this is where yeah. the video is now going towards. What is your expect? Okay. We're out of Champions League. We've got a few more games left in the Premier League. We still need to make sure we lock up third. Um, it's not any sort of glory, but it is what it is. That's what we're playing for. But we've got the FA Cup that I guarantee want to win. And then obviously next season. What is, Ryan, when you talk about the next step, 
What is your expectation for Mason Mount? Well, one thing is that we have, as fans, we have to know what direction the club wants to go in with how Chelsea wants to play. So we can't project how a player should develop if we want to play a 4-4-2 defensive football. Mm. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense describing a Bernardo Silva play in a 4-4-2 defensive mm. football, even though he mm. played in a 4-4-2 in Monaco. But uh, that's a bad <laughs> example I just used. But, um, just screwed your own self. <laughs> yeah. But that was really attacking. That was Monaco's most attacking team. But what I'm yeah. trying to say is that, okay, first thing first, I'm putting Chelsea into the mold of a really possession-based attacking team up yeah. there with the likes of Bayern Munich, um, Liverpool, Man City, uh, Barcelona, that's not commented, etc. Right? Mm-hmm. That That's the idea I have. For my yeah. attacking midfielder, I want someone who could totally own between the lines and a little mm. bit before that in central midfield. Yeah. I want this attacking midfield player to ask different questions of the opposition. Now, I want that next step is that not only, yes, he did well to play in a true ball out wide for Lopsis cheek. Nice. Okay. But that's just one question. I want him able to make those chip passes in behind our we saw mm. when watching Barcelona. I want to see that outside the foot cross from inverted positions, what we mm. saw from Modric. Yes. I want to see I want to <laughs> see more long shots. Right? Yep. I want to see more um, ground... Long balls from deep. Long balls from deep. Mm. Just finding yeah. out a striker. Do but you know what I mean? N- and then uh, the, at the very highest level, if you recall that Man City-Liverpool team uh, match, mm. is that oh. once a gap appears for 0.5 seconds, that pass, already goes, that, that, that pass already goes in behind. Whether yeah. it's from 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards. That pass mm-hmm. are going behind, whether it's from inverted diagonal or, or vertical positions. Mm-hmm. I want him to be able to have that know how to exploit a gap as it comes. Because many times with Mason Mount, yes, he doesn't ask those other questions, lofted passes, crosses, diagonal po- crosses, true balls, this and that. But what mm-hmm. he also doesn't do is that when those gaps arise, he is always two to three to four seconds late to see them. It's yeah. Either he doesn't do those passes or when he does it, it's too late and it's intercepted. Mm-hmm. And and that's the other step I want him to take. It might, and um, I think that he's done a lot of steps, which is good. Mm. This isn't step one. This is more like step four and five out of five. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm asking here is the next step for Mason Mount to become one of the best in the world, which is a yeah. large step. It's a high step. Right? Mm. It's not like baby Darby Mason Mount making the next step. No, <laughs> this is Mason Mount now making the next step to become one of the best in European football. Yeah. So in that respect, dragging Chelsea to a yeah. contendership battle against Liverpool yeah. and 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 Man City, do you know what I mean? And that is the, but not only him. That is what I want to see more from players like Havertz too. Of course. I want and to see Christian Havertz Pulisic do as well. more of that. I want to see Pulisic doing more of that. But yeah. today is about Mason Mount. Correct. And um, because when we when we we thought Havertz would be a more of a creator to when he now came in, but he's not. Mm. He hasn't been to that. He could do more of that. What Thomas mm. Muller does, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, with, with Mason Mount, maybe we should be more um, patient with him. Mm. But we need to start seeing one or two improvements it, it isn't the reason why i lose patience in the six month period is because okay if i was seeing little tiny improvements yeah. incremental improvements over the six months i'll be okay but the mm. thing is when it's stagnant for six months that's the, that's worry. the worry because 23, the worry. 23 turns into 25 and before you know, yeah. you're, to, you're, to, you're off the street. Before you know, you're off the street. I was just gonna say. Before you know, you're off the street. Before chicken. you're just another English talent that, yeah, you know, that never made it to where he's supposed to make it. Correct. Correct. And that's my first that, because we love Mason Mount here. We want him. He's a mm-hmm. proper Chelsea, you know, whatever that means. Baller. The, um, cre- uh, the cre- baller. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um. But, yeah, man. Nah, you're well said. And and do you know what? That's exactly my expectation as well, Ryan. I mean, people talk about the the stats, the goals, the assists and whatnot. I love it. I love it. It's great. But 
for me, I've only loved it for the past two games, really. Because the goals and assists only make sense to my head when I see all the other attributes clicking into gears and all the stuff that you said, Ryan. Asking different questions. I want to see him probe and 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 constantly create chaos because he has the capacity to do that. He really does. He really has the capacity to he do that. He has the technical ability to do it. He has the technique to put in those inverted crosses, to hit those shots, to put in those chip crosses. It's all a matter Absolutely. of... I don't know if that's up to him or up to the manager, to be honest. Uh, see, I was just... You're always like a second ahead of me, Ryan, bro. I was just thinking about saying that. Is it really up to him or is it Thomas Tuchel that just needs to go, hey... Because look at the brothers in Liverpool that does ask those questions. I don't even know their names. What is these young guys' names in Liverpool? I don't even know them, those young midfielders. Harvey... They, uh, is it Harvey Elliott? Yeah, you don't even know them too. But these guys... <laughs> They aren't talked about like a Mason Mount, but yeah. they do ask those questions. They're probably not as technically gifted as Mason Mount, but they still yeah. ask these questions. Why? Because that's all they do on the training ground so it's a with club. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. for us now, it's like you can't if you're not doing it for six months and your manager is not going ape shit about <laughs> you not doing it, maybe it's because your manager probably doesn't see it as a necessity for you to do it. Because mm. we know how Tuchel is for every detail. So maybe those questions that I really want to be answered, playing in between the lines, this and that, mm. probably isn't Tuchel ball. But that's probably our next topic for our next day. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed this little conversation on Mason Mount. I had to talk about it because in recent times... I have given it a little bit on Mason Mount, and rightly so. He has a. I know a lot of people will disagree, but the way I felt, most parts of this season, for me, he did not cut. Like honestly, he did not cut it. Yes, he kept on playing. He kept on playing because of all the other things that people like, you know, energy and pressing and whatnot. But especially the last two games, it all made sense to me. The way I always wanted it to make sense. So let me know what your thoughts are, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan has dropped more superb knowledge on the matter as well. Probing questions, asking different questions, you know, owning between the lines, um, you know, his future and whatnot, and what Rio Ferdinand and Kieran Richardson had to say about uh, Mason Mount as well, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let us know how you feel about Mason Mount in the comment section below. Let us know about all the different things that we've talked about. Uh, on this particular topic, anything you agree, anything you disagree, please jot it down in the comments. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and make sure you please follow Ryan Gunners on Twitter. The link is in the description, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. See ya.